Okay, they're giving him an award. Is it Lieutenant Parlett? We'll get up here? Yes. This is Lieutenant, Lieutenant Parlett. Gary Parlett. Put your camera away. Come on. Up here. Put the chicken sandwich away, too. <laughs> here, give, here, give it to me. <laughs> oh, right here? Right here. <laughs> Congratulations, Gary. Oh, thank you. Without you, there'd be no project. No thank project. Thank you so much. Really, you make me great this stuff. You make this stuff. Thank you so much. I'm Gary, you okay. I'm honored. More than this. I'm honored. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Issa. Thank you. Got it. Where is Oscar? He's getting on my shoulder. Oscar, come on my shoulder. So, Lieutenant, yes. is that a surprise for you? Uh, yes. Big surprise. Now, tell us what's, what this is. It's a thank you for all your hard work here. Right. Because um, I... We've done a lot for the, the airport, and it, if it wasn't for the support, you know, of the military and even the staff that I've been working with over at uh, in the job PRT, it wouldn't have ever been ha uh, done. So I'm I'm honored and very surprised. Definitely. Coins are important. This is like this is yeah. This is great. What is it? Did it tell you what it says? Well, obviously, it says Al Najaf International Airport, but then it has an uh, Iraqi. It's an Arabic. Side, just get on my elbow. One time. The logistical part on, um, of the arrangements for the meeting, and she'll be in most of the meetings as well. And it's going to go very well. She's put together a great program. I think we're going to, if you would be willing, just so we get all the team members here, I think they'd really enjoy having a photo with you. Let me just get someone to organize them all. So, excuse me for just a moment and let me get someone.
Folks, and uh, now we're honored to stand next to really the leader of our troops here, Colonel Gerber. You are the commander of the squadron. So tell a little, first tell the people a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Lieutenant Colonel Scott Gerber. I'm the commander of 3rd Squadron, 3rd Armored Cavalry Regiment out of Fort Hood, Texas. I've uh, been in the Army a little over 20 years and have been to Iraq a couple times and just done the Army thing for 20 years. Had a great time. Talk a little bit about what happened today. We've obviously got a lot of footage, but this, this is something that has been building up for a long time. You know, one of the struggles that we have in Iraq is helping Iraq build itself into a prosperous nation. And if you came to this airport in 2003 when U.S. forces arrived, all it was was that runway right out there. Uh, and this has been an ongoing project with the U.S. and the Iraqi government to turn this into an actual viable international airport. So originally they just barely had a tower here, and then together us and the Iraqis built this terminal. Uh, and then the last thing we've done is we we did put some projects in to make this terminal modern. I mean, I think you'll you'll attest and you'll see on the footage. This looks like any airport you're going to see in the United States. And then out in the tower, we're putting in some equipment, uh, and the Iraqis are also paying for about half a million dollars worth of equipment. So it's about a 50-50 split that will take this from just a visual flight rule airport to an instrument flight rule airport. The impact of that is that they'll double the number of airlines flying in here. And Najaf is Najaf is the most important city in Shia Islam after Mecca and Medina. There's a huge shrine here and tourism is a is a growth industry. So by putting an international airport here that has visual flight rule capabilities, we've just opened up a huge opportunity for money. Money brings prosperity, and prosperity brings the kind of democracy that we want to see here. It brings jobs to the local people. Yeah, it brings jobs. It brings it brings hope. You know, the more the more we expose Iraq to the rest of the world, the better things are going to be. You know, the more that they get their influence from places other than Iran or, you know, the Al-Qaeda elements, uh, the more people we bring in from Turkey, the more people we bring in from Europe, Muslims from Europe, uh, Muslims from America, they'll see a bigger picture of the world and all those people have more money too. Uh, and money is kind of makes the world go round. So this is really not only taking care of Najaf, but it's blasting in this huge amount of positive influence that we want blown into this region to counter just the awful things that the Iranian government is pushing here and the Al-Qaeda is pushing in other places and things like that. None of this would be happening if it wasn't for your troops, 3rd ID before you and others before you. It's, it's been a process that's been going on for a while to rebuild this country. Do you agree with that? Oh yeah, I mean, today is, you know, Today is built on the shoulders of everyone in front of us. I remember when I was here in 2005 and 2006, I was up in Babel, and uh, um, 316 field artillery was down here, I think. You know, and they were working with then Governor Zerf Zerfi uh, and slowly building things and building the first phases of this airport, starting to recover from the Battle of 2004. And it's like you said, you know, it's just you build a layer, you build another layer, you put another brick in the wall. And so what we've seen today is really actually getting to bring something to fruition and really finish one of these brick walls and have something. But it's all built on, you know, the blood and the sweat and the hard work of the soldiers out in the field. And there's another brigade replacing you. One of the things I'm trying to do is, you know, we hear about the drawdown at home, but there's another brigade coming in. They're going to be here for a while. People need to keep supporting them like they have you, right? Yeah, you know, um, when I was home on April, uh, we lost a soldier in Dewania, Private Robert Fries. Uh, and unfortunately, I came back off leave before I could, could attend his funeral, but my rear detachment commander went to that funeral, and that entire city turned out. I mean, from the airport to the funeral home, the streets were lined. Uh, every sign in the city said, you know, this kid's a hero. Um, 
And then the day of the funeral, you know, same thing, all the signs, people lining the streets, and they had a crane that had just this massive American flag. You know, so from the hard times to, you know, we had a, there's an a organization out there called Operation Gratitude that sends free care packages. Yeah, so anyway, I don't know who's, to this day I don't know who, but someone signed the entire squadron up, right? And so everyone's getting these boxes. Well, everyone except the guys out here in Najaf, you know, and, and for the folks at home, Najaf is this little 80-man outpost on the edge of the frontier. And that, you know, they have the smallest chow hall, they have the fewest facilities, you know, and so here we are again, it's like, geez, they haven't got their care packages. So my Sergeant Major Leandre and I are sitting out here on Christmas Eve, and the logistics convoy comes in, and on this are all the care packages for Mad Dog. So Christmas Eve, you know, all these guys out here in Mad Dog get these care packages from home, you know, on one of the hardest days to be gone. Um, and, you know, that kind of support has been going on for eight years. Um, and I can't tell you how much it, not only it means uh, to us, the soldiers, but how impressive that is. And I, you know, and I think, when I think about who to thank for that, it's the Vietnam veterans. Because those people stood up and said, what happened to us will not happen to this generation. And they're leading the way with a lot of groups right now to make oh, yeah. sure. Yeah, leading the way. I've interviewed many of them. It's quite an honor. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, Mad Dog lost a kid out here, uh, Private Matthew England. And, you know, the uh, crazies out of that church in Kansas decided they were going to make a spectacle at his funeral. And God bless them, Patriot Guard riders, and about a thousand of the fine folks in Missouri showed up, and the folks from the crazy church said, this isn't really a good idea, and they went home and the family wasn't disturbed. You know, this is America supporting its troops. Exactly. And they need to keep doing it. Oh, they, yeah. Until all our troops come home. Until everyone's home. And I, I have no doubt they will. Well, I know we're going to be talking with you later, but would you like to give a shout out to family and friends back home? I always like to ask everybody. Well, I always give a shout out to, to my wife back in Fort Hood, Texas, and, uh, you know, the, my family that's spread out all over the West Coast. I appreciate you guys taking care of the home front, and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Well, I'm glad Dr. Liu had uh, suggested when I was coming back over, I'd make sure I stop here. Unfortunately, he went home, but I'm glad he went home, though. You missed him by about that much. Yeah, I know. I know, but we're glad he's home. Yeah, Doc, Doc is, you know, he's another one of these guys, you know. I mean, you look around at the civilians here, they don't have to be here. You know, almost every one of these people is a volunteer. And, you know, Karen's on her third tour. She did one in Afghanistan. She's doing back-to-back -back in Iraq. You know, you, t you talk to these Iraqi American nationals, they've been over here four or five years. And that's one of the reasons why we've been able to have the effects we had in Iraq. I first met Doc in Baghdad in 07 where we went out on some missions with them. And one of them, believe it or not, was an airport. It was a wing of the uh, Baghdad airport opening up. And here I am at another airport. Yeah, well, Doc, Doc, Doc is an American icon. We're lucky to have people like him. Well, we're lucky to have people like you, sir. Thank you for your service. I appreciate you uh, welcoming us like you have. Well, your soldiers glad, have been great. We appreciate you telling the story of the soldiers out there. It's an honor to do this. Okay. Thank you, Thank Colonel you. Gerber. Okay, I think we're going to go over here now and uh, talk with Karen as soon as she's freed up over here.